सर्वेभ्य नमस्कार अद वैयाकरण सिद्धांत कौमुद स्त्री प्रत्यय प्रकरण प्रथम पाठ अक्टोबर मसल पंचदश दिनाक येनाक्षर सामगम्य महेशरा कृत्न व्याकरण प्रोक्त तस्म पाणीन ये नम वाक्यकार वरुचि भाष्यकार पतंजलि पाणिनी सूत्रकार प्रणतस्म मुन मुनत्रय नमस्कृत तटुक्ति पिभाव्य वैयाकरण सिद्धांत कौमुदीय विरच्यते स्टार्टिंग न्यू प्रकरण इन द सिद्धांत कौमुदी टुडे व्हिच इज टाइटल्ड द स्त्री प्रत्यय प्रकरण राइट सो इफ यू लुक एट द सिद्धांत कौमुदी एंड द टेक्स्ट वी स्टार्टेड ऑफ विद samnyas and paribhashas which are the basic definitions and interpretations required to get into the shastra then we dealt with the panchasandhi prakaranam which deals with basic operations among letters or varnas then coming to shabdas we started with the sup adhikara the sauja samot we started with gyan pratipadika then sauja samot and he can cover the entire range of nama padas starting from ajanta pullingas ajanta strilingas ajanta napumsaka lingas similarly halanta pullinga strilinga napumsaka linga and ended with avyayas which means studying having studied this much of the kaumudi we should be conversant with all noun forms now that uh, the shabdadhikara started with the adhikara called nyap pratipadikat so all pratyayas that is the supratyayas were added to pratipadika and to nyap now that adhikara continuing with that adhikara the next thing which comes under that adhikara that is being added to a pratipadika is the stri pratyayas then this prakarana we are going to look at the three pratyayas what are the three pratyayas to what words do we add these pratyayas what are the changes which are happening etc uh it will be better to note one point before starting three pratyayas so far the emphasis was on prakriya you look at the entire shabdadikara you look at what happens next what happens the prakriya is the most is the focus of shabdadikara and even sandhi but in the stri pratyaya prakarana there is hardly any prakriya to go by there are hardly 10 sutras in the entire prakarana which deal with prakriya there is always if you have a an akaranta pratyaya you have savarna dirgha if you have an ikaranta pratyaya you have asya dicha so apart from that there is very very little prakriya to be done in this okay so stri pratyaya prakaranam is where you enter into the proper shastrartha of it both the stri pratyaya prakarana and the karaka prakarana of kaumudi they are topics which deal very strongly which go into the siddhanta of vyakarana that's why the siddhanta kaumudi he puts the siddhanta everywhere but this is where more than the prakriya what we call the prameya bhaga or the shastrartha we discuss what and why and how is what matters more than just looking at uh, the the partial prakriya or the derivation of it so as i had uh, informed you in over mail and uh, over this we'll be using more of uh, balamanorama for these classes that is i thought it is uh, there's no point in typing out the arguments from balamanorama we can directly read from the book wherever needed so please have the balaroma balamanorama with you every time you have a class you can either have the hard copy or i have sent a link to the soft copy of the book so please have it with you always for these classes because otherwise you would probably be lost because i'll be referring to it very often okay. so starting with three pratyayas
what are scree prateas is a question Sthritva bodhakaha pratyaha, sthri pratyaha. Sthri pratyas are those suffixes which indicate the femininity of a word. So if you have say a word like aja, ajaha refers to a goat. So a she goat, the word for it is aja, where the word aja or the pratipadika gets a suffix called tap which indicates that that particular goat has the property of stritva or is feminine. Okay. So there are actually eight stri pratyas which you see in the prakarana. Okay. So there are three pratyas which convert the word into akaranta strilinga. They are called tap, dap and chap. Okay. So these are three suffixes which make the word and akaranta strilinga. Okay. So in all those in tap, dap and chap, the first letter which is t and the get itsamya which you two and are deleted. In chap it gets uh, that also gets uh, chakara gets itsamya by you two and it is deleted. And the final pakara is also deleted by itsamya by halantyam. Okay. So you are left with a as the final thing. So the word will end with a. So an example for tap is aja, for dap is seema and for chap is surya. So these are just examples we will see in detail where they apply. Similarly there are three pratyas which make a word end in e karanta. It will result in e karanta strilingas. So they are called neep, nish and neen. Okay. So again if you take away the word letters which get itsamya which is nakara by lashakvat adhite and the p, sh and n by halantyam, you are left with e. So examples are kartri, gauri, shangaravi, etc. So these three together, neeb, nish and neen are together, words which end in these are commonly referred to as nyanta because they all have ng as the common factor and words which end with tap, dap and chap are referred to as abantas because they have a ap as the common factor. So apart from these six, these six are the most common. There is one u karanta pratyaya called ung, which you find in shashruhu, panguhu, vadhuhu, etc. And there is one ti pratyaya which is very very specific. It is found only in the word yuvatihi, yunastihi. The word yuvan gets ti and it becomes yuvatihi. So these eight together are called stri pratyas. So in the prakarana we are going to see when or which are the pratipadikas which get these pratyas and how. Okay. So you see that the stri pratyas I said refer to only these. There are a few other pratyas. If you go to the krit prakarana, you find that there are a few pratyas which end up being stri lingas always. Say the most common example is ktin. Okay. So there is one general rule any most Sanskrit words which end in that t is strilinga because of that suffix called ktin. You get kritihi, gatihi, matihi, buddhihi. All those are strilingas because of a suffix called ktin, which naturally I mean by default striyam ktin. So the ktin pratyanta becomes uh, strilinga uh, word but that is not considered as a stri pratyaya okay? because that pratyaya does not indicate femininity. So as I told a stri pratyaya is a pratyaya that indicates femininity and nothing else. The pratyayas which we saw in the previous slide, the eight pratyayas, they indicate only femininity and carry no meaning of themselves. Whereas this thin does not indicate femininity by itself. It is a pratyaya which indicates bhavartha in this case. Kritihi means karyam, the act of doing. So the pratyaya carries its own meaning. It just happens that the pratyanta word is ruled to be in strilinga. Okay, so there is a difference. These pratyayas do not belong to stri pratyaya. So a stri pratyaya is one which indicates femininity and carries no other meaning. 
So these uh, krit suffixes are not do not belong in stri pratyaya. So generally you see that there are words in pullinga. So pratyayas which are added to modify these words into stri lingas happen to be stri pratyayas. Okay, that is the general idea of a stri pratyaya. Come to the text of the stri pratyaya. The first sutra, or the first rule of the prakarana is called striyam. It has a single uh, word, adhikaroyam. As you can see, this the sutra number is 413. The fourth chapter, first pada, starts with nyapratipadikat. The second sutra was Svauja Samot. And the third sutra is Triyam. As soon as he Ashpanini finishes with Svauja Samot, he starts with the Sri Pratya Prakarana. So Dikshitar is also taking it in the same way. He finished, he started with Svaujas and he covered whatever is related to it. Then he is entering into the Sri Pratya Prakarana. It is an Adhikara. Samarthanam iti yavat. Till the sutra Samarthanam Prathamadva, which is the 82nd sutra in the Pada. So from 413, Till 4182, because you have around 80 sutras which deal with three pratyayas. Okay. So that is all in the mula of the Kaumadi. He just starts with Triyam and say, in whatever follows, or that everything which is told after this is in Strelinga or Stritva. Okay. But there is a lot more this which you can find in the Vyakhyana. Samarthethi is the Pratika of the Balmanoram. So from now on whatever, I mean, as usual whatever is indicated in red is the Pankti from the Kaumadi, from the Moola. Whatever is indicated in green is from the commentary. This is a Pratika which you have to look for in the commentary. I hope, I mean if you are reading a commentary for the first time uh, the commentary will have some words in bold. That is, he is extracting something from the mula and commenting on it. So that thing we call it as the pratika, whatever is given in bold. So the samartheti, you have to look for the word samartheti in the commentary and then read on from there. So looking into the commentary. Samartheti Yavaditi Avadhu. So the Mula says Samarthanam Iti Yavati. So this Adhikara, the Adhikara of Striyam goes on till Samarthanam Prathamadva. Samarthanam Prathamat Ityataha Prak Ityataha Atra Idam Avadheyam. So he starts, these are things to be known before we enter the Prakarana. What is three? Is a basic question. Fine, we are dealing with three linga prakarana and all that, but what exactly is three as defined here? Because what we generally treat as say feminine is not what is exactly the three linga. As you know, so there are words like shila, there are words like say vidya. So why are they three lingas? You have it is not just a basic. Uh, a division of say masculine, feminine and neuter which you find in nature. So that is what he explains very clearly. Tanakeshavati strisyal lomashah purushasmataha ubhayor antaranyacha tadabhave napum sakam. So that iti lakshana lakshitam avaya samsthana visheshatmakam laukikam stripum sayor lingam. Laukikam stripum sayor lingam. The general concept of stri and purusha as you find in loka. Laukikam is this. Stanakeshavati stri syat lomashaha purusha smrataha. This refers to say a human uh, division of gender. Stanakeshavati stri syat. So the feminine gender is characterized by certain organs like the breasts and the hair of the head. Lomashaha purusha smrataha. Uh, Man is identified by the hairs on the body and other such things. Ubhayohu antaram yaccha tadabhave napumsakam. 
and where there is no special characteristics which you see. It is Tadabhave, where there is neither the Lakshana of the Sri nor the Purusha and no differentiation between those. That is called Napumsakalinga. Iti Lakshana Lakshitam Avayava Samsthana Visheshatmakam. So this definition of Sri and Purusha depends on particular Avayava organs of the Sri or Purusha, wherever, whichever living being you take, when you define, divide it into feminine and masculine, you go by certain organs present, physical organs which are present in the organism to classify it either as Puman or Sri. Iti Lakshana Lakshitam Abhayava Samsthana Visheshatmakam Laukikam Sri Pumsayohu Lingam Tadabhave that is Tayohu Ubhayohu Abhave Sati. So where the characteristics of both the Sri and Purusha are absent. Yadubhayohu Antaram Sadrisham that which is like both. Tat Napumsakam that is called Napumsakam. Okay. Tadidam laukikam lingam asmin shastre na upayujjate. But this definition of linga or gender is not used in shastra, in Vyakarana shastra for a very valid reason. Tasya achetane khatva maladu badhat sri prate anabate hai. Why? He gives two reasons. The first thing is where there are non-living things like khatva. Khatva is a Caught, mala is a garland. So in those, achetane khatva mala do badhat. You do not find uh, the characteristics of three in these non-living things. So three pratyay anapatyay. In such a case, you would not get a three pratyay in those. Both khatva and mala are words ending in tap. They are akaranta strilinga. So since the characteristic of the three are not found in these living things, you would not get the prateya, stri prateya, anapatehe. That is the first reason. Second reason, dharan ityadu tasmat chasona pumsi iti natva anapatehe. Dharan, dhara is an akaranta pullinga, which means wife. Dharaha, it is a nitya bhavachana and a pullinga word which indicates a wife. Now, since dhara is always feminine, Dharan ityatra tasmat chasona pumsi ityatra pullinge eva natvam bhavati. Shas pratyaya, the sakara is converted to nakara in pullinga. So if you go by the standard definition of stri and puman, since dhara or a wife is always feminine, you would not get natva. So tadidam laukikam lingam asmin shastre na upayajyate. Tasya achetane khatva maladav vadhat stri pratyaya anapatte hai. Dharan ityadu tasmacha sonah pumsi iti natva anapatyescha. So because of both these reasons, we cannot accept this definition of stritva. So what is stritva as defined by the Shastra? That's the question. So he says, kintu sattva rajas tamasam prakrita gunanam vridhihi pumstvam apachayah stritvam sthiti matram napumsakatvam. Is prakrita guna. There are three gunas which are found in all living beings. Okay. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. So the Bhagavad Gita itself says there is no living being you find which is free from the three gunas. Okay. Uh, Natadasti Prathivyamva Divideveshu Apunaha Sattvam Prakriti Jair Muktam Erevhisya Trivir Gunai there is no living, uh, there is no thing at all, not living or non-living, whether it is living or non-living. There is nothing in the entire, on the entire earth. Natadasti prithivyamva divi deveshu apunaha sattvam prakriti jai muktam yadevhisya tribhir gunaihi. Evihi tribhihi prakriti jaihi gunaihi muktam sattvam natadasti. There is no thing which exists without these three gunas, which are prakriti jaihi, which are born with nature. Mm -hmm. So, prakrita guna, that is what he says, prakrita, prakritehe agataha, prakritaha gunaha, which are sattva rajas tamas. 
तो एतेशाम सत्तरज स्तमसाम प्राकृत गणानाम वृद्धि उम्स्तम आपसयह स्त्रीतम स्थिति मात्रम नपुं सकत्वम सो शास्त्रिक डेफिनेशन ऑफ लिंगा सेस दैट वेर दीस थ्री गुणास आर फाउंड इन एक्सेस दैट इज देर इज greater activity of the three gunas that is defined as pumstva that is masculinity apachaya sthritvam uh, hypoactivity a lower activity or the lower pramana of these gunas are defined as sthritva that is femininity sthiti matram and just existence of these gunas without any particular activity is called as napumsakatva okay so this as ravichandran ji says is from the sankhya shastra the sankhya shastra is where they define this uh, thing so vrithi pumstvam apachaya hastritam sthiti matram napumsakatvam this is the definition of stri puman and napumsaka as accepted by the shastra it depends on the activity of sattva rajas tamo guna ataeva it is because of this उत्कर्ष अपकर्ष सत्वे स्थिति मात्रम आदाय सामान्य नपुंसकम इति प्रमादः देयर इज वन कांसेप्ट व्हिच वी यूज ऑफन इन ग्रामर सामान्य नपुंसकम इन जनरल वी कैन हैव अ नपुंसक लिंग फॉर ऑलमोस्ट एनीथिंग ओके सो दैट इज अ जनरल रूल ऑफ ग्रामर सो दैट रूल इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस इवन व्हेन देयर इज ऐसे उत्कर्ष और अपकर्ष ऑफ द गुणास दे स्टिल एग्जिस्ट so just taking that basic existence anything can be treated as napumsaka i mean this is found very naturally if you look at something which you do not know you ask tat kim you don't say sahakaha or saka even if it is uh, i mean the answer might be sahavrakshaha or sashila or tat phalam so without knowing it when you ask something you ask in napumsaka because samane napumsaka even when you look at something from afar you can't realize what it is then also you ask that kim so the general gender or by default things are treated as napumsaka because of existence okay this is not just in uh, sanskrit everywhere in all languages you find this that napumsaka linga happens to be the default gender when you don't know you do not have enough information to classify it as pullinga or strilinga अतएव उत्कर्ष अपकर्ष सत्वे अपि स्थिति मात्रम आदाय सामान्य नपुंसकम इति प्रवादः सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ स्त्री पुम एंड नपुंसक लिंग सो उत्कर्ष अपकर्ष साम्यात्मक अवस्थात्रय साधारण स्थिति मात्र विवक्षायां नपुंसकम भवति इति तदर्थः इट इज द सेम व्हाट वी टोल्ड उत्कर्ष अपकर्ष साम्यात्मक अवस्था देर आर थ्री अवस्था फॉर द गुणास इट कैन बी उत्कर्ष इट कैन बी अपकर्ष और इट कैन बी जस्ट स्थिति जस्ट एक्सिस्टेंस और मोर एक्टिविटी और लेस एक्टिविटी सो उत्कर्ष अपकर्ष साम्यात्मक अवस्था साधारण सो अमंग दीज थ्री स्टेजेस वॉट इज कॉमन इज स्थिति मात्र जस्ट एक्सिस्टेंस इज कॉमन टू दीज थ्री so when such an existence is intended to be conveyed tasya vivakshayam napumsakam bhavati iti tadartha samane napumsakam iti artha so idrisham avasthatrayam kevalanvai this avasthatraya that is utkarsha apakarsha and samya is found in all things which exist kevalanvai and kevala vetireki are terms which you find in nyaya shastra okay so kevalanvai is that which has no exception so these three are found without exception in all things that exist there is no exception vai ayam padarthah iyam vyaktihi idam vastu iti vyavaharasya sarvatrikatvat in anything you take you can refer to it in pullinga strilinga or napumsakalinga you can say ayam padarthah in pullinga you can say iyam vyakti vyakti need not be just a human being anything can be referred to as a vyakti any matter and idam vastu so iti vyavaharasya sarvatrikatva so this particular utkarsha apakarsha and sthiti is found in all things that exist 
ತಚ್ಚ ಇದಂ ಲಿಂಗಂ ಅರ್ಥನಿಷ್ಠಂ ಏವ ನೌ ಹೀ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ಸೊ ಡಸ್ ದ ಲಿಂಗ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಶಬ್ದ ಆರ್ ದ ಅರ್ಥ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಿಂಗ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ತ್ರೀತ್ವ ಪುಂಸ್ತ್ವ ನಪುಂಸಕತ್ವ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೆ ಶಿಲ ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ಹರೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಶಿಲ ಆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ಹರೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಸ್ ಗೋನ್ ಆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ and even after the debate there are variant opinions some consider it as arthanishtha some consider it as shabdanishtha and so on but according to siddhanta of the bhashya tatcha idam lingam arthanishtham eva the property of gender it belongs to the artha that is the meaning it is inherent in the thing or in the whatever uh, material you are considering and it does not belong only to the word that's what they say tatchaidam lingam arthanishtham eva paduktam bhashye ekarthe shabdan yatvat drishtam vingan yatvam avayava anyatvat archa the word of the bhashya is explained further ekasmin eva arthe in the same for the same thing ಪುಷ್ಯ ತಾರಕ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರ ಶಬ್ದ ನಾನಾತ್ವ ದರ್ಶನ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಪುಷ್ಯ ಇನ್ ಪುಲ್ಲಿಂಗ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎ ತಾರಕ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಲಿಂಗ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಅ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರ ಇನ್ ನಪುಂಸಕಲಿಂಗ ಸೊ ಏಕಸ್ಮಿನ್ನೇ ಅರ್ಥೆ ಪುಷ್ಯ ತಾರಕ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರ ಇದು ಶಬ್ದ ನಾನಾತ್ವ ದರ್ಶನ so there are different words referring to the same thing which exist in different genders kuti kuti radu refadi avayava upajanane linga bheda darshanaccha so in the same word say there is a word called kuti which is in stri linga which refers to a hut to the same word if you add a character like repa kutira it becomes napumsaka linga kutiram kuti is sri linga and kutira is napumsaka linga both of them refer to the same thing and both of them actually originate from the same word by adding a few extra characters to a word the linga has changed kuti kutiradau refadi avayava upajanane linga bheda darshana cha tanakeshadi tiriktam eva lingam ityarthaha so as you can see this linga will not depend on the characteristics of the uh, vastu like uh, the laukika definition the initial definition we saw tanakeshavati strisya lomasha purusha skrita so that definition will not apply so this is something else which is an inherent property of the matter of any matter okay so the bhashyakara says the linga belongs to the matter so why do we refer to as pullinga shabda we say akaranta pullinga rama shabda akaranta strilinga rama shabda so we are saying that the shabda belongs to the gender and not the vastu right so what is it the prashne pullinga shabda ityadi vyavaharat vachya vachakayo abhedo upacharad bodhya so it is just vacha and vachaka vachaka is the word the word is the one which indicates something and the thing which is indicated by the word is vachya so actually the linga belongs to vachya and not the vachaka but we treat them as abheda there is no difference so because of that we refer to it as a pullinga word and a strilinga word but the linga actually belongs to the artha is the siddhanta uh one word if you don't understand this completely please do not panic the commentary when you are reading it for the first time especially in stree pratya prakarana is a bit difficult to understand the first time okay just listen to it have the samskara as we go on dealing with it you will understand this okay but this is essential because of many things which he which we see later on that is why i am going into the commentary in detail so if you don't understand it completely for now it is perfectly fine okay. 
So what we are debating now is does the linga belong to the shabda or does it belong to the artha? So he says it belongs to the artha and not the shabda. So uh, we will, um, the commentary, we will stop here. There is still some more which goes on in the commentary which uh, is not uh, needed right now. So I wanted to deal till here where the linga belongs to the artha. Okay? So the same shabda can be in different lingas. Say you find uh, some words like say tataha, tati, tatam. The same word can be in three different genders. There are some words which are in Pullinga, which are only in Strilinga or only in Napumsakalinga. So all this is based on usage and it is because of that that in Sanskrit, like in some other languages of the world, you have to know it through the Shastra. That is which word is Pullinga, which word is Strilinga, which is Napumsakalinga. Since we saw that it cannot be decided by external characteristics, that is where the Linga is decided by external characteristics, the gender of the word is also very obvious. That is what is say in uh, happens in languages say like English, like Kannada, like other languages, where the first definition of linga is accepted. That is, whichever has masculine characteristics, that word, a word which indicates that is treated as masculine, a word which indicates a thing with feminine characteristics is treated as feminine, and everything else will be neuter. But that is not accepted in Sanskrit. We accept the Sattva Rajas Tamo Gunaha and in every matter with time, at one time there will be Utkarsha, at another time there will be Apakarsha and at some times there will be only Sthiti. Because of this, all world, all matter in the world can be indicated either by a Pullinga word or a Strilinga word or an Apumsakalinga word. Right. So, since the properties of all three genders exist in matter, there is, cannot decide that a particular thing has to be indicated only by a Pullinga word or a Strilinga or Napumsakalinga. You have, say, uh, words like wife which are indicated in Pullinga by the Araha. There is a Kalatram which is there and the Patni. For the same thing, you have words in all genders and the same word sometimes exists in all three genders. So because of all this the whole prakarana becomes more complicated. Okay? To know which word is used only in Pullinga, which word is used only in Strilinga or which word is both, as far as Sanskrit is concerned you have to go to either the Kosha Say an Amara Kosha will suggest which Linga the word is. Or you have to go to Vyakarana where you have some rules which suggest it. Or you have to go into Prayogas. By usage you will know which word is used in which Linga. Okay. Now coming back to uh, the three Satyans. Uh, I want to do the last two lines of the commentary uh, in the same Pratika, Samarthana Pratamadva, he goes to different other things. He comes back to saying, so Tachacha Sthritom Iha Pratipadika Sleva Vachyam. It is two lines, the last two lines of this particular Prakarana. Then before going to Acharya Tashta, Tachacha Sthritom Iha Pratipadika Sleva Vachyam. He also says the Sthritva, the femininity of any word is contained in the Pratipadika itself. Okay, so the Pratipadika itself has the property of Sthritva. Tavadayasu Tadyotakaha. The three Pratyas like Tap, Dap, Chap, etc. only indicate or they explicitly tell that Sthritva. So because of this, Tathacha Tavadishu Satsu Avatsyam Sthritva Bodhaha Itiniyamaha so the rule is not that 
there should compulsorily be a stri pratyaya for a stri linga word. You have words like say matru, svastru, etc., which are in stri linga. Like similarly, you have vak, you have gir, etc., which are all stri linga words which do not carry a stri pratyaya. So the rule is not that all stri linga words will have a stri pratyaya. Okay? But the rule is only that anything which has stri pratyaya will be stri linga. If a word ends in the suffix ta, brav, cha, neep, nish, neen, um, or ti. If there is a word which ends in any of these eight pratyayas, it will compulsorily be a stri linga. But the vice versa is not true. That is, a word need not compulsorily have a stri pratyaya to be in stri linga. Okay, so the rule is very important. You should not look for the stri pratyayas in all stri linga words. But any stri linga word which has these or any word which has these suffixes will compulsorily be a stri linga. Okay, so with that we'll move on. Striyam ityadhikaraha. So now this adhikara pervades to things which <coughs> indicate to indicate the sense of stritva in a matter. So the first sutra under this adhikara Ajad Dita Shtap okay. 414 So there are two words in the sutra Ajadi Ataha Tap So as you can see this sutra gives the suffix tap and to tell you tap is the suffix which is found in a majority of strilinga words. Any akaranta strilinga which you find has a more than 90% probability of being of ending in tap. The other two suffixes tap and chap are very very limited. Okay. So generally if you find an akaranta strilinga it happens to be tap. And this is also a very general sutra, why we will see later. So, Ajadita Shtap is the rule. Nya Pratipadikat is the adhikara which is coming. Striyam ityapi adhikara. So, Ta Pratyaha Pratipadikat Param Bhavati and Stritvam Dyotayitum Bhavati. So, this Taap is added to a Pratipadika and it indicates Strilinga. So, Dikshitar puts the sutra artha. Ajadinam akarantasya sa vachyam yat stritvam tatra dyotye tapsyat. Dikshita's sutra arthas are very very important always. Siddhanta Kaumudi, the value for Siddhanta Kaumudi is, uh, I mean much of it is attributed to the way in which Dikshita phrases his sutra artha. Okay? So the way he has put this sutra artha is also very very important. It it goes to the root of Vayakarana Siddhanta. That is why it is very aptly termed as the Siddhanta Kaumudi. It indicates what is the Siddhanta or the final view of the Bhashyakara. So he says, Ajadinam akaranta vachim yat stritvam tatra dyotye tapsyan. This is what I told just now that the stritva belongs to the Pratipadika. So if there is a word, akaranta word, which carries the property of stritva, or ajadi. Ajadi is a class of words beginning with aja. Okay. So if the word belongs to the cla this class of words and carries the property of femininity, ajadinam akarantasya vachyam yatstritam tatra dyotye to indicate or to emphasize that property of stritva in the pratipadika, we add the pratyaya called tap. So tap is added to all akaranta words and as a general rule and it is added to words which belong to the Ajadi class. Ajad yukti nishaha ni pascha badhanaya. Now you see that Aja, the word, the class Ajadi, it contains all Akaranta words. Aja, Ashwa, Chataka, Edaka, whatever. Okay. So all words, most words which belong to the Ajadi Gana are also Akarantas. So when you are already stating Akarantas Tap bhavati, an akaranta word will get tap. Why again make this class of ajadi? Is the question. So he says, ajad yukti hi nishaha ni pascha badhanaya. He says, ajadi naam tap bhavati to overrule nish and neep. 
So what actually happens in Sri Pratya Prakarna is Adanta Tab Apavado Neep Nishav. Initially, as gen a general rule, he says Adanta se Tap Bhavati. Raswakaranta word will get Tap is the general rule. So as an exception to that, Neep Nishav, he tells Neep and Nish. Neep and Nish are also added only to Akarantas. So as a general rule, to Akarantas we add for. Under specific conditions, Neep and Nish will overrule Tap. Now to overrule that Neep and Nish, Tayoho api apavadaha ajadi gane pataha. Again he puts those words in the ajadi class. So for these words, instead of neep or nish, you have to add tap. Ajad yukti hi nishaha nipascha vadhana. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at the prakriya, the first word in ajadi gana is ajadi. So you have aja is the pratipadika. So Tasmat Pratipadika, Ajadya Tashtap Iti Sutrena, Tap Pratyaha Kriyate. So Aja Tap Chutu Ityanena Takarasya Itsamya. Halantyam Ityanena Pakarasya Itsamya. Tasilopaha iti sutrena. Ubhayohu Takara Pakara Yohu Lopaha. So you are left with A. Aja and A. Now Akasavana Dirkaha and Aja. So there is no prakriya. So the same prakriya will go on for all till we end with the chap. Okay. So everywhere you have only akara and since it is always added to akara anta, there is always savarna dirkha. Okay. So there is no prakriya to be noted here. So aja is the first example. Aja is a goat. So when there is there is a feminine goat, that is the goat has the property of femininity, you add the top to it to indicate it. So now, is this Aja a Pratipadika? This is a Akaranta Strilinga, like Rama. But is this a Pratipadika is a question. Because if you remember the definition of Pratipadika, there are two definitions of Pratipadika. Right? The first one says, Arthava Radhata Rapratyah Pratipadikam. And the second one says, Kruttadhira Samasashtra. So according to the first one, Arthava Radhata Rapratyah. Dhatum pratyam pratyantam chavajaitva arthavat chabda swarupam pratiparika samyam syat. Now this is a pratyanta. This is ending in tap. So it will not get pratiparika samyam by arthavat adhatara pratyaya pratiparika. And the three pratyayas are not krit, not tadhita, not samasa. So it will also not get pratiparika samyam by krit tadhita samasa asta. So this aja does not have Pratipadika Samya. If it is not a Pratipadika, you cannot add the su-suffixes to it. Sup-pratyas. If you don't add su-pratyas, it will not become a pada. Sup-tingantam padam. It has to be either subanta or tinganta. Now you end up in a situation where you can neither add sup-pratyas nor ting-pratyas. So we use the paribhasha here. Pratipadika grahane linga vishishtasyapi grahanam. It is paribhasha. A very important paribhasha. Paribhasha says, Pratipadika Grahane, when you are taking a Pratipadika, Linga Vishishtasya Api. You also consider that Pratipadika which is formed by adding a Stri Pratyaya. That is a Linga Vishishta Pratyaya to it. So because of that Paribhasha, you get Pratipadika Samya. Otherwise, this would not be a Pratipadika at all. So Aja is Pratipadika. So you add, since it is a Pratipadika, you add Supratyaya. The forms will be like Rama, Rame, Ramaha, etc. Ataha Khatva. An example for Akaranta word is Khatva. So you can look at the derivation of the word in the commentary. Khatveti iti pratike. Khatakankshayam iti dhatuhu. The dhatu is khat. Ashu, Rushi, Lati, Kani, Khati, Vishibhya, Kvan. So you add a Kvan suffix to Khat. Kvan nityata kakara se itsamya vakaraha bhavati. Khatva iti bhavati. Khatva shabdaha adantaha. Adanta is hrasva akaranta. So the word Khatva ends in hrasva akara. Tasmatu 
ಅಜಾರಿಗಣ and to hraswakara the suffix tap to indicate streetva tap is the first of the three pratyas which we are having okay adadi bhi streetvasya visheshana neha panchadi okay i think we should stop here and continue with this tomorrow because this is again as i said in three pratyaya i have to be prepared to encounter the shastrartha at every step he goes into detail of why things are how they are now he is explaining why he has phrased the sutrartha in that particular way for ajanta tashta so just uh, go back and listen to this again and uh, understand what has been done so far tomorrow we will continue with this any questions Okay. Yes. Uh, what does it mean? What does it mean? Cut. Kankshaya. Kankshaya is desire. Yes. So, a katwa is that which facilitates desire. A cot is where you sleep. Okay. This question, does the Ajadi Gana not have any words which uh, are not akaranta? no ajadigana has all akaranta words there are a few ha- uh, halanta words nishe dishe etc which is uh, debated sometimes but like 99% of ajadigana contains of hrasa words there are two or three halanta words that's all any other questions so swami ji you know chara samam na yam adhigam yam hai so the sutrartha will be then it is ajadi and akaranta so the akaranta yes. and so it should be both and condition yes yes it, no 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 it is not and whether it is akaranta or not as long as it belongs to the ajadi gana it will but it happens that the ajadi gana contains akaranta words okay. so the question is why do you mention separately when it, they are already akarantas if you just say atashtap akaranta tap bhavati you will already have tap so why put them into a separate class called ajadi is the question so the answer is even for akarantas tap is just a general sutra there are many exceptions for akarantas under particular conditions neep is added nish is added so to overrule that neep and nish he is again putting them into a separate class saying ajadi so these words even though they satisfy the conditions for neep or nish they will still get tap so which means if it is an ajadi even if it is non akaranta it will still get tap like this will get disha or something like that Yes, yes. Okay, thanks. If it belongs to Ajayi and not Akaranta, it will still get top. Okay, thanks. Enakshana samam nayam adhigamme maheshwarat kutsnam vyakaranam prokhtan dasmai pani na ye namaha. Akya karam vararuchim bhashra karam patan jalim pani nim sutra karan chaprana tosmi manitrayam. ಪುನಿತ್ರೇನ್ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ತದುಕ್ತಿ ಪರಿಭಾವ್ಯ ಚ ವೈಯಾಕರಣ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಕೌಮುದೀಯ ವಿರಚ್ಯತೆ